If you're not familiar with PlexTrack, we'll do kind of a brief intro to our Runbooks module, which is where, 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 our, where we send our customers for the, those true collaborative purple teaming engagements, right? So, uh, so you can build out a Runbook based on, on any, any tactics and techniques. It comes pre-built with the MITRE tactics and techniques, and we're big fans of MITRE uh, because it highlights the, where, where procedures get executed within the life cycle of the attack, right? And so it's, it's a great nomenclature to continue to bridge the gap between the response side and the proactive side and, and really help uh, solidify where are, the, where are the gaps that we have in, uh, along the whole path of an attack, right? So one nice thing about PlexTrack is that we can you can import runbooks or, or emulation plans from a variety of sources. Um, you can export them out of PlexTrack and give them to other people. You know, we're, we're working on building a community of, of runbooks that people are testing out. And I think OnDefend does a great job of helping in this arena as well. Um, but you can also import from our, our great friends at Scythe. I know George, I think he's on the, on the, on the, on the webinar, or at least uh, attends today, but uh, you know, we, we have a great, we have a great partnership with Scythe uh, and so does OnDefend and or Blindspot mm -hmm. and so so Ben's going to highlight some of that as well so you can go grab those community threats and bring them in and execute them uh, and and gather the results and then you can also pull in you can also pull in data from the minor adversary emulation plans right and so um, I'll just highlight if you were to go to the GitHub page for the Center for Threat Informed Defense here are those emulation plans and uh, you know for the demo we're going to show you would just go grab one of these emulation plans off of their website and in your plex track instance you would import it here um, so if we're talking about apt 29 which is what i kind of want to show off today is is you would go bring that in here and then you can go execute it you can either go execute it manually or you can pass it off to like Scythe or to, uh, to Blindspot. Um, and even like Blindspot, Ben, I'll let you explain how Blindspot actually interacts with Scythe as well. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we, could, we can go ahead and bring in uh, this, this uh, adversary emulation plan and we can say, hey, we're going to do this and we're going to say, I, I think we are, you know, we're running it. This is the fifth run, right? I think we've, we've ran it uh, several times before just as, as a, an example, and Bruce Wayne Technologies is, is who we're going to attribute this to. We'll go ahead and tag this with like APT29 just so that we have some reference. Um, in FlexTrack, if you're not aware, you know, you can tag everything, right? We, we utilize tags heavily and that, that comes into play uh, within uh, the analytics. Um, so as you begin a new engagement, uh, you, you see all the procedures that, that you are going to execute during this engagement, right? And so, so you can either do this from a manual perspective or you can, you can execute these within an automated platform uh, like Blindspot. Uh, but basically what, you, what, you're, what you're testing is like, was this successful, right? Did we, did we execute as the red team? Did we execute these steps correctly? And did they, did they fire on the right assets? Um, you can add how you can add assets from from the existing client database. You can add new ones, uh, and you can specify whether that was successful on on these on these assets as well. And overall, did we feel like from the blue team perspective, this was a successful attack? If it was successful on the red team side. What happened on the blue team side? Did we have evidence of it? Was it forensically logged? Was it was it alerted, but nobody did anything with that alert, or did it actually get blocked? Right. So, um, so we'll just say, hey, this was forensically logged, and then you can keep running through each procedure. And so, the, the red and the blue team can log in interactively and collaborate uh, throughout this whole exercise. Um, and uh, you know, we'll go ahead and just add a couple more here, just for just for giggles. Um, and then once once that is complete. We'll go ahead and submit the engagement, and this 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 generates a report, right? And from here, this is where you can polish up the evidence. You can add the evidence so that um, the 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 the, uh, the details of the of the report come in. Um, uh, I forgot to flag everything, anything as findings, but as you come into procedures, you can see all these were all the things that were executed. So you, you give a visibility to your customers or to your end users or the blue team, like, hey, here, here were the results of this engagement, you know, over time, you know, here's what we saw. And we can, we can change some of these in, and modify them to actually become findings. 
Um, and so, so we really have this reporting mechanism that allows for this more detailed view of the, of the engagements. And really where this also comes into extreme power is in our analytics module. So if I, if I come over to, um, to the analytics module and I wanna just get the analytics on our APT29 campaigns, um, we can bring this open and you can see, hey, we've ran this multiple times and here's the coverage that it has within, within the runbook. It's, it's uh, covering nine, ta uh, sorry, 10 tactics. Um, of, the, of the runs of that campaign, nine findings have been generated. Uh, and that, that, those are like high risk items that need to get executed. Uh, you kind of get a bird's eye view. This is our take on the minor attack matrix, right? Because I, I, I'm of the opinion that the matrix is great, um, but it's getting unwieldy from a, a visual perspective. <laughs> Big time unwieldy, big time. Yeah. It works, right, so like, how do we kind of visualize this and can we drill in, in a little bit different fashion? So this at least gives you some perspective of like this campaign, here are the, here are the tactics that are really emphasized in, these, in, the, in the run of this campaign, heavily on discovery, heavily, heavily on uh, privilege escalation and defense evasion, right? Which makes sense. Like you, once they're in, they want to stay there and be able to roam around and things like that. Um, and then uh, of the findings that were created during our campaigns, where were they? Where were they focused? Right. So you start to you start to visualize your gaps. Right. Like, hey, we we clearly have a big gap in the discovery realm. Right. So where do we need to? What do we need to focus and invest on? And then this is something that I really like is is really that trending over time. You can see, hey, when we first executed it, here were the blue team outcomes. And as we keep cycling through, we can start to see the trends. And so ideally in this graph on the blue team outcomes, you wanna see the blue getting bigger, right? Uh, that, that more and more of these, of, these, uh, of these attempts were blocked or you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, mitigated in some fashion. And then on the red team outcomes, you, know, you can see like which ones were successful and you wanna see that successful you know, execution going down and the, and the failed ones going up, right? That's, those are the trends you want to visual, visualize from, from your campaigns as you execute these runbooks.